Hi, everyone. This is a video on Roman Catholicism. Welcome to the Mission de Alcalá here in San Diego. Looks probably familiar to a lot of you. You've probably all, many of you have probably come here with maybe your grade four class or maybe you've come here on your own. So this is going to be a quick lecture about Roman Catholicism and sort of some of the defining characteristics of, uh, of what makes you know, makes up the Roman Catholic Church. Roman Catholicism is the largest Christian tradition in the world, with over one billion people scattered throughout the world uh, who identify as Roman Catholic. Most of those people are in the Americas and in Europe, um, and in the U.S. itself there are over 50 million Catholics. Of those 50 million Catholics in the United States, uh, Many originally were in sort of the northeastern part of the U.S. when the first sort of uh, groups from Europe were coming over, Irish and Italian uh, Im immigrants coming over the 19th century and the early 20th. And increasingly in the last hundred years or so with growing populations of Latino, Latina communities throughout the Midwest and the southern states, Roman Catholicism is actually growing in these parts of the, United, of the U.S. Now, why is it called Roman Catholicism? Well, the first institutionalization of the church happens about 400 years after the death of Jesus. And at that time, the Roman Empire was still in power. And the center of that empire, of course, was in Rome, which is where the Vatican is built. And that is where the center of the church's power sat for almost 500 years, until there was a split in the 11th century, which brings us sort of the division between the Eastern Orthodox Church and the Roman Catholic Church. The Roman Catholic Church becomes the sort of universal center of political power in the development of modern Europe. Um, throughout the Middle Ages, the church held on to most of the political and economic power in the European area, and Roman Catholicism is also what is then exported through La Conquista to the Americas and the conquest as it arrives here also to the Californias. The missions throughout the California coast uh, were established in the mid to late 18th century and the mission of Alcala is actually the oldest mission that was founded by Father Junipero Serra and the Franciscan Order. So for a good thousand years the Roman Catholic Church was the principal church in the Western world until the Protestant Reformation, 16th century, and that'll be another lecture that we talk about that. So one of the things that's really interesting and important to remember about Roman Catholicism is how diverse it is. So if you go to visit a Catholic church uh, and you ask six different individuals what it means to be Catholic, you'll probably get six different answers. And that's one of the things that makes the Catholic Church so interesting and so, uh, so complex to understand. Generally, when we talk about the hierarchy of the church, we begin with the pope and the cardinals and archbishops and bishops and priests, but it's much more complicated than that. There are co-fraternities and different um, orders of uh, nuns and monks and different divisions of the Catholic Church. It's a hugely complex institution. And whereas in some communities, for example, all throughout Latin America, there are small base communities that identify as Catholic that meet in the houses of individuals, then you've got also the much more formal uh, institutional um, organizations and buildings like the one that we're in right now. So you've got a huge range of different ways of practicing to be a Catholic Christian, of believing what it means to be a good Catholic Christian, and how all those things sort of affect the way that people live their everyday lives. And this brings us to lived religion. Lived religion is a term that scholars in the social sciences use to talk about the everyday 
lived practices of individuals who identify as Catholic or Christian or any other uh, religious denomination. And so it's looking not at what the Pope is saying or what the official doctrine of the church in Rome is, but actually how everyday people live out what it means to be a Christian or a Catholic in this case. And in the States, it's really interesting that of those 50 million or so Catholics, there are many who have very different ideas, theological ideas about, for example, uh, same-sex marriages or women in ministry or if folks who are divorced should be able to take uh, communion or not. And so within even the small country of the U.S., this small portion of Catholics, you have widely different ideas of what it means to cor correctly interpret the scripture and correctly interpret what it means to be a Catholic in this day and age. One of the things that makes Catholicism has made it so historically important is that it's also been a vehicle for colonialism. And so, especially as we're thinking about the role of the missions in colonizing the Californias, um, Catholicism played an incredibly important role. There's something very malleable about this Christian tradition that connects with local custom and local culture that we'll talk about more in another video, but there's a very, there are very real mobility to Christianity, and that goes for all Christianity. Now it's more of a Pentecostal um, dynamic that there's Pentecostal Christianity growing rapidly throughout the world. For the first hundred, a thousand years of, of Christianity in the West, it was the Catholicism was the mobilizer um, that accompanied um, processes of colonialization and, um, and the conquest. And we'll talk more about that. But this all goes to show that Catholicism is a really great um, study object to think about the complexity and the diversity of Christianity, even within one tradition uh, of many, many traditions. Um, we see that there's huge diversity and great uh, richness in sort of the historical and the current um, manifestations of that tradition.